So today we're going to do a um, first part of probably many parts and we'll end up um, amalgamating the, the video together um, on how to build concrete ponds. Uh, typically what we do is we um, we'll, we'll get them prepared and we have a cement truck coming but we're in an area right now that's in between some pens and we don't really have a, a space for a cement truck and I honestly don't feel like uh, tearing down aviaries to get my tractor in to pour concrete. So this pond is going to be hand dug 100%. So the first step obviously is to find the spot you want to put a pond and uh, we're going to take this, uh, we've, we've found some old uh, 2 by 4s um, just laying around, we figured we'd utilize them just to get rid of them. This is going to be our frame. So in this case, we got a seven by seven. Uh, this is going to be a seven by seven pond here. Um, so we've essentially just kind of cleared out an area a little bit, and we've laid this uh, two by four frame down. We've screwed it together, um, and we've just laid it down. Uh, next step is to dig out the pond and level up the frame. We'll do that um, as this video proceeds. So the next step uh, to building these uh, concrete ponds has been uh, almost completed. We got a little bit more touching up to work to do. Um, basically, we've, as I said a, a few minutes ago here, we uh, made a frame with two by fours, and now we've come in and we've kind of hogged out this the center piece to give us a rough shape of the pond. Um, what we'll do now is we'll end up taking a level. And out of all four sides, all the way around, we make sure it's level. We'll have we'll drive stakes in the ground on the corners and bring it up to level. Um, in this case, we're actually going to bring this two by four down a little bit because we don't want the two, the form up above the ground. Um, so then, after we get that this leveled off, we get in here with a rake and we rake this neatly. Um, one other thing we didn't do here is we didn't dig the. Uh, the ditch for the drain yet we'll get to that shortly um, we've actually got the drain pipe we're going to go right uh, over in front of me um, it's going to be connected into this uh, we kind of screwed up because this drain pipe should have been longer but this is this is the drain pipe it's going into this is a clean out um, i'm going to just put a 45 up to this pond here um, and if you note we use uh, four inch uh, sanitary piping here uh, drain pipe uh, for our to take the waste away. When we get going on this pond, um, we'll talk about that shortly, um, we will use two inch uh, PVC, uh, Schedule 40 PVC pipe uh, to go up into the pond. Uh, but our So the pond is now framed out. We um, took the level and we leveled up all the edges, uh, all, all the sides rather, and we staked in the uh, put some stakes in and we uh, screwed the stakes to our forms here. Uh, the inside here we try to, we got, it's all pretty much the way that we're going to um, pour concrete over the top of it. Um, it's important when you're doing ponds like this to make sure that you're filling in evenly with your cement, with your uh, dirt before you pour your concrete in there uh, because you'll just be wasting a lot of concrete. Um, this area here is going to be for the drain. We're going to put the drain in here, uh, as we discussed a few a few moments ago in this video. Um, we're going to have a drain in it. If you opt not to put a drain in it, the best thing to do would be to dig a deeper hole here and uh, fill, you know, uh, line it with concrete. That way you have a little sump pit. Uh, but I would highly, highly, highly recommend uh, not to put a sump pit in. Just put a drain in. It's going to be a lot easier uh, down the road. Um, you just ask for problems by not having drain. And if you spend, a, you know, probably a couple hundred dollars on a project like this, um, you're going to be struggling for the next how many, however many years you have ducks or a pond. So you're just better off just doing it right and, and plumbing it and putting a drain in it. Um, so we'll talk about next. Uh, so we just discussed that we have this pond already for. Uh, basically ready for concrete except it needs the, uh, the drain in it. This is a uh, trench dug for the drain. 
looks like it needs a little bit more uh, more work but we'll do that when we put the drain itself in um, and again we're going to start we're, we're actually going to probably put a 45 down near that uh, drain pipe coming up there um, simply because we miscalculated where we, where we put this pond we'll run a drain pipe up into here and this is going to two inch and then uh, then we'll fill it back in and we'll be ready to go for uh, kind of so here we are back today another day uh, working on this pond um, that we're going to we'll be putting cement on uh, today we're going to be pouring concrete rather um, we just finished up putting the drainage in um, typically I like to glue these fittings but uh, it's not really necessary in fact today I didn't have glue so I just put them together without gluing them I just got to make sure that they're um, snug when we go to bury this in. Um, if you notice down at the far from me here, this four inch pipe, it gets reduced down to two inch. Um, we always use a two inch uh, going into the ponds, that way we don't suck ducks down the drain. This sounds silly, but uh, blueing stuff like blueing teal, cinnamon teal, uh, North American ruddy ducks, all the small ducks can get sucked down a three inch uh, or larger drain. Um, which they can't with a two inch. Um, the only problem with a two inch is if you have ducklings, you're raising ducklings in the pond, in the, in the pen with a two inch opening, um, you'll have to put a cap on it because the ducklings can obviously go down the drain. Um, so we've got this stand pipe here. Um, when this is finished, we're gonna be able to pull this out and that's gonna serve as a drain. But when we friction fit, this is only friction fit in here. So we'll stick it in there and that'll serve as our, we'll cut it off and. It'll serve as overflow however height we want the, the water to be in the pond. Um, typically this pond is an 8x8 eight eight pond. Um, if we go over, if we go up 10x10 10 10 or larger ponds, uh, usually, well, I'm not going to say always, but usually we will put reinforcement mesh in the pond. Um, we haven't found it necessary with these smaller ponds over. So we got the pipes all filled back in and uh, one of the things that we did here is we always make sure we dig underneath this, this uh, two inch elbow. Um, although we, we're gonna leave this standpipe in uh, when we're pouring the concrete uh, so we don't get cement down in the hole, um, down in the drain hole. Um, we wanna make sure that we have enough room underneath this to pack concrete underneath it and we're gonna pack it all around this elbow. Um, that way, hopefully it won't leak. If it leaks, then we gotta go back with a uh, hammer drill and cut everything out and repack it with concrete. So typically we use uh, a, we have a cement truck come and deliver the cement. If memory serves me correctly we usually get a 12,000 pound PSI uh, architectural grade cement. Um, since today we're mixing the cement uh, by hand um, we've chosen to use this uh, high strength uh, quickcrete um, with, with uh, stones mixed in it um, you can if you want to save a little bit of money um, you can use Portland cement and mix it with uh, sand and uh, stones but uh, in the long run it's just gonna be a lot of extra time that uh, most of us don't have um, so we today we're gonna to use it instead of hand mixing it we're gonna use a cement mixer um, and basically all you do is you just add water to this mix and you just get it to like a uh, semi wet mix um, you don't want to have it too dry because then it's hard to form uh, but you don't want to have it so wet uh, that uh, it runs all over the place which with this consistency here um, we will actually have a little bit of problems forming the sides of the pond until this dries out a little bit so it'll dry it out as we get spreading it um, right now we're ready to ready to start pouring this stuff I got a little bit more mixing to do um, but we're ready to start pouring. So we just started concrete um, and basically what we're doing is we got a, a, a trowel here and we're going to, this is actually a finishing trowel um, and you can make these really smooth if you want to spend a lot of time. We don't tend to spend a lot of time on these. Um, so basically what we're going to do here is, for example, we're going to take this uh, concrete here. This is actually still a little bit wet. We're going to keep pulling it up to the top. Uh, up, right up to the top of our form to give us a nice uh, 
smooth surface up at the top. And we just continue going along. And then if we have any like little bubbles, we got a lot of time to work this concrete, but we got like little spots in here. Um, after it starts to dry down, we can put some water in it, or we can just tap a little bit. It'll bring up the water in the concrete and you can smooth it right off. And if you work this enough, like I said, if you work this enough, you can make the surface really smooth and really nice, but um, I'm actually not going to do that because I don't have time to mess around with um, playing with uh, concrete, uh, making it nice and smooth for duck pond. So we're finishing up this pond here momentarily, and uh, we actually had to go through and put another layer of concrete on the top of it because I, I just I did notice that we are at about two inches and we shoot for four inches deep. Um, we did calculate it before and we did uh, provide for enough uh, concrete in this project, um, which we, we can calculate the concrete mathematically or we can go online and find a concrete calculator, which is always the easiest thing to do. Um, and what you do with that is simply you put in the length and the width of your pond and the depth of the desired concrete. Um, and that'll come up with the number of bags in this case. We've got the bags of concrete or it'll come up with the yards and if you're in the event that you're using a concrete truck. Um, where I'm standing, I'm standing on some dirt. Uh, it's actually soil, sandy soil. Um, we always pour on top of the soil up here. It's got a lot of uh, perk to it. It lets a lot of this, the, the water out. Um, so we won't have any problems with uh, water building up underneath the pond or anything. Uh, we never have ponds freezing in the wintertime. Um, of course, if you empty a pond out, a concrete pond in the wintertime, and you have some frost, you will heave the pond. Um, but if you're living in an area uh, up north that has uh, you know, potential to hold water underneath the pond, you might want to put some uh, stones on it for drainage and put some drainage uh, uh, piping coming off the pond like French drains or something. Um, likewise, in North Carolina, we have uh, ponds sitting on top of clay. And we pour the ponds directly on top of the clay um, and we don't have any issues with freezing, obviously, because there's no uh, freezing events down there. Um, so this pond here, um, like I said, we're going to go another layer of concrete over the top of it. When we're done with it, there may be a few holes in it. Um, and we'll end up using type best masonry cement to patch it up. Um, incidentally, if these ponds do leak a little bit, it's usually not a, a, a big ordeal. Um, if they leak just a little bit, you can do, you can actually live with it because you're going to be putting um, water in it probably on a regular basis. Um, the drain here, we talked about the drain earlier. Um, what we're in the process of doing is we're going to pad concrete around this drain pipe and right up to the top of this opening here. Um, we may, in the event, you know, if you're using a, a concrete truck, a lot of times you'll have concrete come right down to the top and it's uncontrollable and if they're bigger ponds, um, you might have concrete come up on this pipe. In that case, uh, what we do is we let the concrete dry for a couple hours and we'll pull this pipe, we'll wiggle this pipe around, make the hole a little bit bigger, pull it out. In extreme cases, we will get our hammer drill out, hammer drill everything, um, but, you know, the best thing to do is pull the, the pipe. Um, so we're going to finish this pond up and uh, probably the next time we shoot this video it'll be, um, the pond will be uh, getting ready to dry out and uh, tomorrow we'll So we're finished with this pond now. Um, we went through and we uh, put another layer of concrete on. Um, with that in mind, I just wanted to mention if you have to add more concrete to make it thicker, uh, you, it's imperative that you do it when you're building the pond. Uh, once the concrete dries, it's very difficult to get concrete to stick on concrete. Um, another thing, this is a really small project, so we were uh, basically using, uh, I showed you earlier, a, uh, a float uh, finishing uh, trowel, rather. Um, and we were also using a shovel, um, and we were hand mixing it in the cement mixer. Uh, you're mixing it with the cement mixer versus by hand. Um, we also used a shovel to shovel the concrete into the pond. Um, and I had mentioned earlier that most of the ponds that we do are um, with a concrete, we call a concrete truck and have a concrete truck deliver. Um, and if you're doing bigger ponds, uh, bigger projects, uh, you're not going to be able to do them easily uh, with a shovel and with a, you know, just a trowel. You might have to have other tools 
Uh, one in particular is uh, called a Darby, um, which is basically a big float that is about at least that long, um, and that enables you to get inside the pond and work the concrete. Another tool that we use a lot for uh, bigger ponds is a uh, what we use. Sometimes we use bull floats, uh, which you can actually have uh, a big handle on them and you can uh, smooth the concrete off. Uh, another probably the most valuable tool we have valuable tool we have for uh, working concrete with a concrete truck is a, it's a, something called a come along, which essentially looks like a rake, but it has a scoop on it, and we can pull concrete around. Um, and those tools again are for bigger jobs. Um, so again, we, we used a, a finishing trowel to smooth this concrete off. Um, if we took some water right now and sprinkled it on top and then ran the trowel over the top, we could even get a smoother finish. Um, conversely, you can take a broom or uh, at Lowe's or Home Depot or any hardware store, they, they'll sell uh, brooms specifically for brooming concrete. And you can make a nice broom finish by just dragging the broom across the concrete. Um, so this pond will last, uh, who knows, 20, 30 years, uh, I expect. Uh, probably outlast me here. Um, and uh, we'll have this in operation here as soon as we get the, the top netting on this particular aviary. And uh, as I may or may not have said earlier, uh, this is just an unused uh, space in between a couple of aviaries. We decided to put a couple of ponds. All right, so uh, we're all complete with this uh, concrete pond that we've uh, been building up over the past couple of days. Um, the only thing that we have to do is we have to get in here and pop this frame off here. And they generally pop fairly easy. Sometimes you need a pickaxe or you can unscrew the, the frame itself. Um, and then the last thing that we need to do is to cut the, uh, the drain pipe, the overflow pipe off uh, so that we get, uh, so, so that it drains uh, keeps the level proper properly in the pond. Um, as you can see, uh, speaking of level, we these frames here that we put in, uh, we screed the concrete up to the top of the frames, uh, and that allows us to give a a level uh, pond line all around the pond. And you can see it's pretty pretty close. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and.